In this video, I'm going to graph the elimination of a drug from the body under two different circumstances, one in which it follows first-order elimination kinetics and one in which it follows zero-order elimination kinetics. For both of these situations, I'm going to assume that the drug distributes evenly throughout the body after a single bolus dose has been administered intravenously. Remember, for first-order kinetics, a constant fraction of the dose is eliminated per unit time. And for zero-order kinetics, a constant amount of the drug is eliminated per unit time. Let's look at first-order kinetics. On the y-axis, we'll show the plasma concentration of the drug, and we'll put this on an arithmetic scale. On the x-axis, we'll plot the time after drug administration, also on an arithmetic scale. So now, at the zero time point, we administer an IV dose of the drug. Let's say this brings our plasma concentration up to a certain level of 80 micrograms per milliliter. This is our concentration at the time of drug administration. Now let's say that our drug has a half-life of 12 hours. This means that every 12 hours, the blood concentration will decrease by half. So 12 hours after the drug is administered, our blood level is down to half of the original value, so it's 40 micrograms per milliliter and another 12 more hours, that is two half-lives after drug administration, it has decreased by half again. So now it's at 20 micrograms per milliliter. The blood level is one quarter what it was when the dose was first administered. Now, after another 12 hours have elapsed, that is three half-lives after the drug was administered, the blood level has dropped to half of what it was 12 hours ago, and the blood level is now 10 micrograms per milliliter. That's one eighth of what it was to begin with. At 48 hours, it's down to 5 micrograms per milliliter, and by 60 hours, or 5 half-lives, it's down to 2.5 micrograms per milliliter. That is about 3% of what it was at the beginning. When we look at the graph I've drawn, you can see that the line is curved, not linear. But now let's plot these same points on a graph with the y-axis on a logarithmic scale. Again, at zero hours, the concentration is 80 micrograms per milliliter. At 12 hours, the blood level is 40 micrograms per milliliter. At 24 hours, it's 20 micrograms per milliliter. At 36 hours, it's 10 micrograms per milliliter. At 48 hours, it's 5 micrograms per milliliter, and at 60 hours, it's 2.5 micrograms per milliliter. Now look, I get a straight line. As an aside, the area under this line is called the area under the curve, or AUC, and it represents the total exposure of the person to the drug over time. Now let's switch gears and look at a zero-order graph. It's going to look a little different. For one thing, we are always eliminating a constant amount of drug per unit time. The elimination rate is going to be the same regardless of the drug concentration. So let's give an IV bolus of drug number two, and for the sake of simplicity, we'll say that the concentration after this IV dose is also 80 micrograms per milliliter at the zero time point. But with this drug, a constant amount is eliminated per unit time. So let's say that after 12 hours, we've eliminated a given amount of the drug, and taking this amount of drug out of the body decreases the total body concentration by 15 micrograms per milliliter, down to 65 micrograms per milliliter. Another 12 hours later, and we've eliminated the same amount of drug from the body again, this brings the concentration down to 50 micrograms per milliliter. Another 12 hours later, and we're down to 35 micrograms per milliliter. And 12 hours later, we're down to 20 micrograms per milliliter. And another 12 hours later, we're down to 5 micrograms per milliliter. So when plotted on an arithmetic scale, the relationship between concentration and time is linear. But now if we plot the data on a logarithmic scale using these same data points, we get a curved line that doesn't really change that much until the concentration that's left in the body is really low. Importantly, 
We can't really calculate a half-life for a drug that's undergoing zero-order kinetics because the time that it takes for half of the drug to be eliminated from the body really depends upon how much drug is in the body, so half-life isn't very meaningful. So, to summarize, for first-order elimination, a constant fraction of the drug that is in the body is eliminated per unit time. This is because the elimination pathway is not saturated. The half-life, which is the time needed to eliminate half of the drug from the body, stays the same regardless of the concentration of drug in the body. When plotted on an arithmetic scale, the concentration versus time plot is an exponential decay curve. When the y-axis is plotted on a logarithmic scale, the graph is a straight line. For zero-order elimination, a constant amount of drug is eliminated per unit time. This is because the elimination pathway is saturated. You can't really calculate a meaningful half-life for a zero-order elimination because the amount of time that it takes to eliminate half of the drug from the body will depend upon how much drug is actually in the body. When plotted on an arithmetic scale, the graph of concentration versus time is a straight line. When the y-axis is plotted on a logarithmic scale, the graph is a curve that falls off sharply toward the end.